million times, there's, there's a million different uh, things going on uh, with Star Trek. So, you know, from the Star Trek communicator to the Star Tech Motorola phone, uh, from the laser phaser down to a, a stun gun, to the thing Spock used to carry around, which sort of lacked definition, but it did bunches of things on the show, you know, to a laptop computer. And, and you can draw those connections over and over again. Uh, in fact, that, this previous slide actually, you can't read it, but when you pull it up on the internet, you can trace it through it. It's really amazing how many things that we've had influence us from, from art, right? From some form of art, whether it was a painting or a drawing or a movie, that then becomes influences the next generation of techies that build the next innovations, that create the next version of our society. So that stuff goes on and is pretty, pretty well uh, worn territory. Um, if I could make a hard jump back to when we're talking about Yugoslavia and we were talking about war crimes and we were talking about, you know, very briefly, how did, how did a country like Yugoslavia who was uh, embraced modernity, had hosted the Olympics, and how did that evolve back down into, uh, into chaos and Jessa? Also, the question of like, well, how did all the Germans go along with what was happening in Germany? Like, you know, what, what was actually at the core of all of that? And, and I've always found that interesting. I've always found it just as an interesting topic. And I, what I find is an intersection between art, technology, and innovation with what was happening in the culture at the time. So, um, I don't know if you, do you recognize the, the car on the phone, right? The, the original name of the car, which we now know as the Beetle, it's the most popular selling car in the world. Over 21 million cars have been sold. Uh, its original name was the KDF Wagen, or the Kraft der Freude Wagen, which was strength through joy. And it was a program that uh, socialist Nazis ran. Uh, strength through joy was run by Dr. Robert Lyme. And their job was to, you know, some people call them the Ministry of Fun. Um, they gave away um, concerts. They had health clubs. Uh, this was all free to the German people. They had uh, cruise ships. You could take cruises for free. They built uh, vacation resorts. Um, and and as, a, as a Nazi citizen, as a German citizen, you had access to all of this. And what they did with the, the, the Beetle, Hitler went to the best engineer, which was Ferdinand Porsche, and said, I want a car that will be mass produced, mass sold. He wanted it to be aerodynamic, that was all the rage in the 30s. He wanted it to look like a beetle, that's where that, the name actually comes from. And, and uh, Ferdinand Porsche delivered. He delivered the first cross der Freude, the KDF Wagen. Um, and the way they sold everybody on it, and where they got the money for it, is they went to the German people and they said, you know, you buy these little stamps every week and you put them in a stamp book. And the artwork on this was gorgeous. They had saving tins, kids could save for them. And if you put a stamp in every week, it, when you filled the book, you would get a car. Wow. And then you could drive your car on the new Autobahn and you could go on your German vacation, which that's actually, uh, I think, Prora, uh, one of the facilities they built. And this was just this wonderful story. So all the German people were enthralled with this. And they all bought these books and they all put their stamps in and they would all buy their stamps and all this money went into the German government. It was a huge success for the Germans, uh, for the government. And they built what eventually became what we know as the Volkswagen facility. And, and the, the, the chassis and the design of the car were just, it, they were incredible. They were a real breakthrough. And Porsche being Porsche, it was one of the best designs around. Well, it turned out to be a fraud, and he took all the Nazis took all that money and they put it into the war, and all of the stamps and all of the artwork and all of the great things of the KDF became something very negative overnight. In fact, Dr. Robert Lyme, who was on trial for war crimes when he hung himself, um, he built other camps too, right? Those are the ones we know about more often. He built the holiday camps, but. His KDF also built the concentration camps and the work camps. And all of this was under that rubric, and you couldn't find it unless you really know how to look. So the money that the Germans were pouring into the KDF for vacations and holidays and concerts and cruise ships and, and art lessons and all of these things was actually secretly being diverted into other programs. That's what built what we sort of study about mostly in history. But this was the way this worked. So there was this sort of crossover between 
technology from guys like Ferdinand Porsche and, and the artwork of the savings pins and the beautiful stamps and the, the beautiful vacation resort. And they built cruise liners who later were converted into the war effort. In fact, the, the Beetle itself becomes the, um, it becomes the German version of the Jeep. They took the chassis, which was this incredibly innovative chassis, and it, and it became, uh, they called it the Kugelwagen. It was their, and you, if you've ever seen a World War II movie, you've seen the Kugelwagen. It's actually a Volkswagen Beetle chassis that was converted for, for the war effort. Um, so that's sort of how that transition through. So if we, again, we go to this, this concept of uh, art, technology, and innovation and how they influence uh, society. So you see how you can move society with TV shows and you can take Star Trek and make a flip phone out of the communicator. You can also see how you can take the artwork of the KDF and the technology of the KDF and turn that into something very negative as well. So if we just accept that premise for a moment that art influences the future and art influences technology, which I, I think is true, what does it say about where we are right now? So if we were to look at where we are right now, what's the leading art that we see out there today? And, and I don't know if you've ever seen uh, this movie, um, V for Vendetta, uh, Natalie Portman was in it. And this movie revised Guy Fawkes, of all things, Guy Fawkes, right? Who, who was someone who tried to blow up parliaments in the 1600s, he was uh, rebelling against the government's oppression of, of Catholics uh, at the time. He didn't blow up Parliament, obviously. He was arrested and hung or killed or whatever happened to him. So he's used in this movie. Um, the movie has the main character wearing a mask, a Guy Fawkes mask. So this is sort of really stretching something out of history. Well, if you've watched the news lately, you cannot see one of the protests that are going on without seeing half the crowd in the Guy Fawkes mask. Um, in fact, it's, it's used repeatedly over and over again that people are going back to that movie, taking the concepts of that movie, using the mask, but also the concept of revolution, of we're, for social change, we're going to do our version of blow up parliament. Um, this is anonymous. <laughs> We don't know if it's anonymous, they're anonymous, but this is the hacker group anonymous. Yeah. Uh, some of the other photos were, you know, it could be Antifa, it could be, I mean, pick, fill in the, the, the blank of the group, they're usually in a Guy Fawkes mask. And it's somewhat telling of where we're going because you can see that direct correlation between the movie and the, and the action on the street. I don't know where that goes, but you can't deny the correlation. If we can jump to another movie, this was one of my favorites that started in the 80s, this was The Terminator. And I don't know how many movies there are out there on AI going wild and taking over humanity, whether it's The Matrix, it's Terminator, um, you could even throw Blade Runner if you want to go all the way back for that kind of a category. And we've seen sort of generations of those movies coming along the line, and we're not really getting into artificial intelligence not being the theory anymore, being actual real. And if you believe Elon Musk has anything worthwhile saying, Elon Musk is... Is, is ringing the warning bell against artificial intelligence. He believes it's the biggest existential threat to humanity. Um, so he actually thinks, you know, we need more regulation. Imagine that, Elon Musk, the, one of the free market capitalist gods is saying we need to regulate AI because AI is actually uh, the biggest threat to humanity. Um, Vladimir Putin recently famously said, you know, whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will rule the world. So there are some very serious thinkers and, and, and powerful people who are looking at